Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill is one of the all-time great business books, one of the all-time great life books, really. And today I am going to read out my personal notes that I typed out from this book about six years ago. And uh, I give away these notes uh, at my website, jameswanick.com, uh, in the form of a PDF. So if you want to get these notes and follow along, uh, go to jameswanick.com and uh, I will send you uh, my notes. But Think and Grow Rich is a very famous book uh, by a former journalist called Napoleon Hill back in the day. And uh, it's pretty much treated like the Bible of business books in terms of mindset, getting your head straight for success, developing persistence, overcoming obstacles. Uh, and Napoleon Hill was. Uh, like I said, he was an American author uh, and he became uh, very much an early producer of personal success literature. So, you know, today we've got, you know, people like Tony Robbins and the motivational coach and Jim Rohn who, who passed away a few years ago um, and all of these people who are, you know, into personal development and goal setting and uh, you got Brian Tracy, but Napoleon Hill back in the early 1900s was very much the first author of kind of like self-development mindset. Um, he died in 1970, but Think and Grow Rich, which he uh, wrote in 1937, has sold 20 million copies. 20 million copies. Um, he was also an advisor to two presidents of the United States, Woodrow Wilson and uh, Franklin Roosevelt. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to read out these notes and we're going to do a little bit of commentary on them. But if you are wanting to, I wouldn't say toughen up, but if you're wanting to really have a, a refresh, if you like, on staying positive and understanding your goals and desires and staying on track and you're wanting to create a winning mindset for growth, whether it's in your finances, whether it's in your spiritual life or your relationships, then Think and Grow Rich is one of the all-time classics. Uh, and we're going to get into my notes here in about, well, let's, we'll start in about 90 seconds. But I just want to give you a little bit more context on, on, on this as well. Because um, Napoleon Hill wrote this, uh, well, he wrote rather that the turning point in his life uh, came in about 1908 when he was given an assignment to interview Andrew Carnegie. And Andrew Carnegie is one of the great industrialists and philanthropists of our time. And at that time, he was one of the most powerful men in the world. Um, and if we just go, if we go to Napoleon Hill's uh, Wikipedia page here, I'm going to pull this up and I'll just read it. In 1908, Carnegie was among the most powerful men in the world. Hill claimed that Carnegie had actually met with him at that time and challenged him to interview wealthy people to discover a simple formula for success and that he had taken the advice to interview successful people of the time. Uh, so yeah, the, he, he, uh, Napoleon Hill set out and interviewed uh, people like Andrew Carnegie, Henry Ford, uh, Edwin C. Barnes, who was an associate of Thomas Edison. Um, apparently, Carnegie had given Napoleon Hill an introduction to Ford, and Hill uh, then introduced him to uh, Alexander Graham Bell, creator of the telephone, Thomas Edison, and a few other people. So, essentially, Napoleon Hill interviewed some of the world's greatest business people, most successful people in history, really around that time in the uh, um, sort of, you know, early to mid 19, uh, 1900s. So he collated all of the great thought processes from some of the world's greatest entrepreneurial minds at the time and put them into this book, Think and Grow Rich. And uh, now I'm going to read you my notes and you can uh, pick out some of these things that are, are, are relevant to you. 
and uh, let's do it. Okay, so I'm reading from my notes, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. I'm not reading from the book. I'm reading from the notes that I took when I read the book six years ago, which you can find at jameswanick.com. And I will send them to you uh, so you can print them out and stick them on your fridge or stick them on your bathroom wall or stick them near your workplace. I keep mine um, in a drawer in my, uh, in my bathroom and I pull them out and, from time to time just to give me a reminder. And I pulled them out today and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to go over them. So here we go. Uh, write down a written statement of purpose. It should be similar to the following. So this is like a statement that he's saying. By the first day of such and such include date, I will have in my possession $50,000 or you just input any amount of dollars in here, which will come to me in various amounts from time to time during the interim. In return for this money, I will give the most efficient service of which I am capable, rendering the fullest possible quantity and the best possible quality of service in the capacity of salesman of, and then that's where you uh, describe the service that you intend to sell. I believe that I will have this money in my possession. My faith is so strong that I can now see this money before my eyes. I can touch it with my hands. It is now awaiting transfer to me. So what this is, is a written statement of purpose. So he's encouraging you to write down almost like a contract to yourself saying that I will have by this date, this amount of money, or I will have by this date, a certain uh, health or a certain weight or a certain relationship. So it's a written statement of your purpose. Uh, let me just go over it again. And again, you can just copy and paste the version that you get when I send it to you from my website, but I'll just verbally say it again. This is an example of a statement of purpose. By this date, I will have in my possession this amount of money, which will come to me in various amounts from time to time during the interim. In return for this money, I will give the most efficient service of which I am capable rendering the fullest possible quantity and the best possible quality of service in the capacity of salesman of my product or my service. I believe I will have this money in my possession. My faith is so strong that I can now see this money before my eyes. I can touch it with my hands. It is now awaiting transfer to me. So what Napoleon Hill was encouraging us to do here was to write it down, write it down, and when we write it down, it forms in our brain and, it, and we sort of subconsciously and consciously think about that goal as we, as we go along and we start to take the actions towards that goal. All right, let me go on here. Uh, he's talking about persistence here. The hidden guide lets no one enjoy great achievement without passing the persistence test. Those who can't take it simply do not make the grade. Those who can take it are bountifully rewarded for their persistence. They receive as their compensation whatever goal they are pursuing. So he's talking about persistence here. That is not all. They receive something infinitely more important than material compensation. The knowledge that every failure brings with it the seed of an equivalent advantage. So two main themes here. To be successful, we must be persistent. Those who can't take it simply do not make the grade. Those who can take it are bountifully rewarded for their persistence. They receive whatever goal they are pursuing. To put this in context in my own, I guess, business life, um, you know, I've, I've created the 30 day no alcohol challenge. I've created Swanee's glasses. The 30 day no alcohol challenge uh, did has done particularly well, but I've made a couple of changes to it in the last two or three months. And it's gone backwards in terms of the number of people and the number of um, uh, sales who've gone into that program. And uh, because I've experimented with a few changes, I wanted to experiment um, a few structural changes, a few payment changes and a few marketing changes. And as a result, not as many people have, have gone into that program in the last two or three months. And uh, that's been frustrating, but at the same time, I keep reminding myself persistence, persistence, persistence. Maybe I needed to go two steps back in order to go one big, huge leap forward. And so the persistence is keeping me 
continuing on. It's not like throwing in the towel and going, this is all too hard. I'm being persistent. Now, you don't want to be so persistent that you're flogging a dead horse. As we say in Australia, it's like if you've got a dead animal, you, you know, you're trying to beat it and try to get it to get up. But if it's dead, it's not, nothing's going to happen, right? So you have to identify that. But if you can persist and overcome setbacks and obstacles and keep going, according to Napoleon Hill, who interviewed Andrew Carnegie, Henry Ford, Graham Bell, Thomas Edison, some of the greatest business people of our time, then people receive as their compensation whatever goal they are pursuing. Uh, he goes on to say, uh, uh, a, a few people know from experience the soundness of persistence. They are the ones who have not accepted defeat as being anything more than temporary. Exactly. So defeat is nothing more than temporary. How many times do we just go, oh man, it's too hard. That sucks. I got defeated. And then we just go, that's permanent. If we treat it as temporary and we get up and we go again, then we move forward. Uh, and then he, Napoleon Hill goes over four necessary steps here to develop persistence. They call for no great amount of intelligence, no particular amount of education, and but little time or effort. The necessary steps are a definite purpose backed by a burning desire for its fulfillment. That's the first one. Number two, a definite plan expressed in continuous action. Number three, a mind closed, closed tightly against all negative and discouraging influences, including negative suggestions of relatives, friends, and acquaintances. Number four, a friendly alliance with one or more persons who will encourage one to follow through with both plan and purpose. These four steps are essential for success in all walks of life. Hmm. So let's go over that again. To develop persistence, the four necessary steps are, number one, a definite purpose backed by a burning desire for its fulfillment. So what's your definite purpose? What's your burning desire? Why do you have a burning desire? To ask ourselves what your purpose is, it's like, what, what do we really want? What do you really want out of life? Like, what's your purpose? Is it just to build a business to make money or is it to build a business to make money to have a lifestyle? Or is it to have a lifestyle because you value freedom? Is it because you want to change the world because you want to help the most people? You've got to have a definite purpose backed by a burning desire for its fulfillment. Number two, a definite plan expressed in continuous action. A plan, a plan, a plan, a plan. Do you have a plan? Or are you simply just going through the motions and bouncing from thing to thing and there's no real direction, there's no real vision, you're just kind of like going with the flow? This is an interesting one. I got to tell you, for many years, I loved just going with the flow. I loved the fact that I didn't know where I was going to be a month from the day that I was saying it. I didn't know. I loved the fact that maybe I might be living in Colombia one year and Argentina the next and London and Los Angeles and New York and Austin and moving around. And I was quite proud of the fact that my plan was really to have no plan. <laughs> it was just to kind of bounce around. So I guess in that sense, you could say that my definite plan was to have no plan. And I expressed it in continuous action. Well, uh, now it's changed a little bit. Now I have a definite plan. Uh, and a definite plan is to be more settled in one place. Um, my definite plan is to work on uh, my relationship, uh, romantic relationship, my definite plan is to uh, is to build business uh, to, to, uh, two of these businesses: Thirty Day No Alcohol Challenge and the Swanee's Blue Light Blocking Glasses, and to keep helping people and keep working in the self development space where I'm learning new things and educating myself. That is my definite plan expressed in continuous action. Now you can break that down any even more more specifically. I could break that down into my uh, 30 day no alcohol challenge i'm going to have a definite plan so on this month we're going to test this and then on this month i'm going to test paid advertising and then this month i'm going to try and set up affiliates that's an example of being more specific but according to think and grow rich by napoleon hill the necessary steps include having some kind of definite plan 
expressed in continuous action. And the continuous action means just always be doing things, always be taking action. Don't just look at the plan and go, oh, that's nice and do nothing. Actually express it in, in, in action. Um, I, I think I'm pretty good at taking action. Um, I'm also pretty hard on myself and the fact that I often think that I'm not doing enough. Um, but uh, as long as you're taking some form of action, you're moving forward, you're moving the needle. Number three, a mind closed tightly against all negative and discouraging influences, including negative suggestions of relatives, friends, and acquaintances. This is a good one. People will always tell you you shouldn't do that. Oh, that's too much. Or even if they don't say it, they'll think it. And you can sense that they think it. Uh, I know that my, my mum and dad back in Brisbane, Australia, still scratch their head about what the hell I'm doing living in America. You know, and they just want me to come back to Australia. And, and my mum especially makes little thing, little remarks like come back home and blah, blah, blah. And according to Napoleon Hill, you got to have a mind closed tightly against all negative and discouraging influences, including the negative suggestions of relatives, friends, and acquaintances. Now you could argue that my mum's not really being negative because she's just wanting to encourage me to change locations. But for me, that's not what I want to do. And so every time she says that it's for me, a negative suggestion from a relative in this case, in this case, my mother. So you must have a mind closed tightly against all negative and discouraging influences, according to Napoleon Hill. So in that sense, you know, I have to block it out and just go, whatever. I'm living my own life. I'm doing this and I'm staying, staying true. That's just one example. Uh, other people will question your choice of, of uh, romantic partner. People will raise eyebrows. Or even if they don't say anything, you can just sense it. They'll make a little little remark or a little joke here where you kind of just ob straight away know that they're thinking that you shouldn't be doing that or shouldn't be dating that person. Um, maybe they're right. I'm not saying that you've got to completely discount their, their thoughts. But uh, if you are persistent and if you're developing persistence and you, are, and you genuinely believe in whatever it is that you're wanting to believe in, then you must have a mind closed tightly against all negative and discouraging influences. As uh, Napoleon Hill states. Um, number four was a friendly alliance with one or more persons who will encourage one to follow through with both plan and purpose. Yeah, you got relationships, you know, uh, people who support you, you can't do it alone. You got to, you have to get you have to help other people and you have to have other people help you. Um, you have to have friends, business associates. You got to reach out to people. These four steps are essential for success in all walks of life. Let me continue on here. When one makes an impartial study of the prophets, philosophers, miracle men, and religious leaders of the past, one is drawn to the inevitable conclusion that persistence, concentration of effort and definiteness of purpose were the major sources of their achievements. When riches take the place of poverty, the change is usually brought about through well-conceived and carefully executed plans. Anybody can wish for riches, and most people do, but only a few know that a definite plan plus a burning desire for wealth are the only dependable means of accumulating wealth. One of America's most successful and best known financiers followed the habit of closing his eyes for two or three minutes before making a decision. When asked why he did this, he replied, with my eyes closed, I'm able to draw upon a source of superior intelligence. Hmm. I've been trying to get better at uh, meditating using the Calm app and the um, Headspace app. Uh, it's still a struggle for me, but when the, on those occasions when I actually do it, I feel amazing for having done it. So try sitting with your eyes closed, even for two or three minutes. If you're trying to make a tough decision, you don't know the answer. According to uh, Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, closing your eyes for two or three minutes before making a decision will draw upon a source of superior intelligence.
So give that a try. Let's go on here. Make your desires clear and reduce them to writing. You will also understand the necessity of persistence in carrying out instructions. So yeah, just this morning, about 20 minutes before I started uh, preparing to record this episode, um, I actually did some freestyle writing. I had out, got out a book and I just wrote down some desires and put them in writing. Apparently, that's a good thing. Apparently, that'll help to trigger things in the brain as well, in persistence. Uh, it begins with study, analysis, and understanding of three enemies, which you shall have to clear out. These enemies are indecision, doubt, and fear. Indecision, doubt, and fear. How many times have you been indecisive, not made a decision? A constant going back and forth. Should I, shouldn't I? This indecision is a huge enemy to success. Doubt. Scared of what might happen. Not backing yourself. Fear. Fear of consequences. Napoleon Hill goes on here. He says, uh, there are six basic fears with some combination of which every human suffers at one time or another. Most people are fortunate if they do not suffer from the entire six. Named in the order of their most common appearance, they are the fear of poverty, the fear of criticism, the fear of ill health, the fear of loss of love of someone, the fear of old age, the fear of death. So the six fears of poverty, criticism, ill health, loss of love, old age, and death. Fears are nothing more than states of mind. One state of mind is subject to control and direction. Man can create nothing which he does not first conceive in the form of an impulse of thought. Every human being has the ability to completely control his mind. And with this control, obviously, every person may open his mind to the tramp thought impulses which are being released by other brains or close the doors tightly and admit only thought impulses of his own choice. So he's saying here that uh, he's starting to move into thoughts here and that it's our thoughts that are the reason for our health or our wealth or our relationships. It's just everything that we think. Master the fear of loss of love by reaching a decision to get along without love, if that is necessary. Hmm. That's interesting. Master the fear of loss of love by reaching a decision to get along without love if that is necessary. Kill the habit of worry in all its forms by reaching a general blanket decision that nothing which life has to offer is worth the price of worry. Kill the habit of worry in all its forms, by reaching a general blanket decision that nothing which life has to offer is worth the price of worry. It's like that song, what's the world, what the hell does it go? What's the point of worrying? It never was worthwhile. So pack up your troubles in your old kit bag and smile, smile, smile. Wow. I'm trying to remember when I learned that, probably in 1985 when I was 10. <laughs> So yeah, uh, we all know this, like there's, there's no point in worrying. It doesn't get you anywhere, but we still do it anyway, don't we? I mean, even this morning when I woke up in bed for, for 10 minutes and just sort of lay there, I was worrying about um, how my paid Facebook ads promotion was going to go in terms of driving traffic to the 30 day no alcohol challenge and worrying about whether I was going to spend a lot of money and get, and get no return on investment. What's the point of that? What, was there any point? There wasn't, but we do it anyway, don't we? We just worry. Uh, if we can control it as best we can, then obviously we're going to let go of the shackles and we'll be able to get up and kick ass. In fact, another thing I was thinking, I've been watching this show lately called Billions. It's on Showtime. Uh, and I've, been, I've sort of got into the practice of watching a little bit of late night, like a indulging in half an hour, 45 minutes of late night um, 
TV show because now it's sort of like Game of Thrones season, right? <laughs> Game of Thrones is on on a Sunday night now. I've got to watch Game of Thrones, but I slipped into the habit of uh, watching a, a TV series here and there. Uh, so I'm watching the show Billions, and there's a character on that show Billions um, uh, who works, at, and she's a uh, she's a woman who works at a uh, at a hedge fund, and her job is is like a psychiatrist. And all of these hedge fund guys who need to be really like kicking ass and not worrying all the time and making good decisions um, go and see her when they're worried and stressed. And she sort of like gets into their head and reframes their thinking to the point where they walk out the door five minutes later, ready to like go and kick ass and there's no worry and there's no stress. And they're just like, yes, let's do it. And because of that, they're able to make good decisions and be aggressive and make good trades and therefore make millions of dollars for the company. So uh, what was the point of that? Well, that character, that psychiatrist kills the habit of worry in all of the people who work in that hedge fund. Um, that's an extreme example, but if we were able to get inside our heads or have a psychiatrist, psychologist or someone or head coach or whatever, just help us eliminate that worry, and be fearless, wow, we'd be supermen or superwomen, wouldn't we? Because as Napoleon Hill says, we, you may control your own mind. You have the power to feed it whatever thought impulses you choose. With this privilege goes also the responsibility of using it constructively. You are the master of your own earthly destiny just as surely as you have the power to control your own thoughts. You may influence, direct, and eventually control your own environment making your life what you want it to be, or you may neglect to exercise the privilege which is yours to make your life to order, thus casting yourself upon the broad sea of circumstance where you will be tossed hither and yon like a chip on the waves of the ocean. You have absolute control over but one thing, and that is your thoughts. So our thoughts, our thoughts, our thoughts. You have absolute control over but one thing, and that is your thoughts. That is one of the tricks of opportunity. It has a sly habit of slipping in by the back door, and often it comes disguised in the form of misfortune or temporary defeat. Perhaps this is why so many fail to recognize opportunity. Know what you want and have the determination to stand by that desire until you realize it. So now he's talking about. Um, failing and success. So he says, one of the most common causes of failure is the habit of quitting when one is overtaken by temporary defeat. Every person is guilty of this mistake at one time or another. When riches begin to come, they come so quickly in such great abundance that one wonders where they have been hiding during all those lean years. Success comes to those who become success conscious. Failure comes to those who indifferently allow themselves to become failure conscious. Every person who wins in any undertaking must be willing to burn his ships and cut all sources of retreat. Only by so doing can one be sure of maintaining that state of mind known as a burning desire to win essential to success. Let me repeat that. Success comes to those who become success conscious. Failure comes to those who indifferently allow themselves to become failure conscious. Every person who wins in any undertaking must be willing to burn his ships and cut all sources of retreat. Only by so doing can one be sure of maintaining that state of mind known as a burning desire to win, essential to success. I'm on the last page of my notes here. Success requires no apologies. Failure permits no alibis. If the thing you wish to do is right and you believe in it, go ahead and do it. Put your dream across and never mind what they say if you meet with temporary defeat. For they, perhaps, do not know that every failure brings with it the seed of an equivalent success. I like that. Never mind what they say if you meet with temporary defeat. For they perhaps do not know that every failure brings with it the seed of an equivalent success. 
I like that a lot. Repetition of affirmation of orders to your subconscious mind is the only known method of voluntary, voluntary development of the emotion of faith. Faith is the eternal elixir which gives life, power, and action to the impulse of thought. Thoughts which are mixed with any of the feelings of emotions constitute a magnetic force which attracts from the vibrations of the either other similar or related thoughts. So yeah, he's talking about positive thoughts attract other positive thoughts. Positive emotions create positive thoughts. That's why if you, uh, let me just use an analogy here. If you hang out with positive, happy people, you will be happy and positive. If you hang out with six guys who all have six packs, you'll likely get a six pack because you, you're, it's like attracts like, or there's that magnetic force. If you're always whining and complaining, then you're likely to always hang out with people who whine and complain. My, my dad used to always say to me the phrase, um, if you lay down with dogs, you'll come up with fleas. So think about your friends. Who are they? Are they bringing you down? Are they holding you back? Are they negative? These people that you're spending time with? Thoughts which are mixed with any of the feelings of emotions constitute a magnetic force which attracts from the vibrations of the either other similar or related thoughts. Excuse me. Just drinking some water here. So there you go. There are my notes on Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich. I would encourage you to uh, either get the book or if you want those notes, which uh, are my notes in PDF form, reminder, you go to jameswanick.com and I will send them to you. Let me just go to my website now and make sure I tell you exactly where it is so you can, you're not like searching for it. Let's go to jameswanick.com. Let's have a look here. There it is right on the top. It says, get my book notes on three life-changing books. And it says, enter your name and email address and I'll send them to you. So, um, yeah, just put your email address in there and I will send you those notes. But they are the books from Think and Grow Rich. Persistence, a plan, a mind closed tightly against all negative and discouraging influences, a friendly alliance with one or more persons who will encourage you to follow through with plan and purpose. Uh, making your desires clear and reducing them to writing. Overcoming those six basic fears, poverty, criticism, ill health, loss of love, old age, fear and death. You have the power to control your mind. Um, burning desire to win. Success requires no apologies. Failure permits no alibis. Mm. It's good stuff, huh? I bet when you were listening to that, you were thinking about how this can work in your own life. Um, yeah. What's your definite purpose? What's your definite plan? What are the negative and discouraging influences in your life that you can close out? Who are some friendly people that you can uh, get involved with? to improve your business or your relationships. Persistence. Persistence. The good notes, I like these. You have absolute control over but one thing and that is your thoughts. So I'm gonna put this on my Snapchat actually. If you're following me on Snapchat, uh, or if you're not rather, you should de definitely, uh, Download Snapchat onto your phone and follow me. It's just my name, James Swanick, S-W-A-N-W-I-C-K. I do probably about 10 to 15 little 10-second videos a day where I do little habit hacks and positive affirmations and do little book reviews and things like that. I'm just going to do one right now while I'm on the, on the thing with you. All right, I'm here just recording my podcast and I'm doing a uh, review of the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, one of the great success books of all time. But I'm here just recording my podcast and I'm doing a... There you go. So, 
that's that's me the the replay of me on my snapchat let me just send that to my snap so if you want to see the video of me doing this uh go and follow me on snapchat and um i am now going to tell my snapchat audience to go and uh download the, the show so you can listen to me recording a snapchat so you can see what it's all about if you know if you don't do snapchat you can hear me doing it so you'll, you've got an idea um, and if you want to listen to my podcast then go to the james swanick show in itunes there it is right there it's been going for two years now there you go there we go so now I've just talked to my Snapchat followers. Um, so thank you for listening to this. I appreciate uh, your support. Please do share this episode now with uh, someone that you feel will get a lot of benefit uh, from this. If you're listening to this on your phone right now, then you can share this very easily. But when this episode finishes, you will just go click on the button and... Uh, you can just hit the share button there. There's three little uh, dots down on the bottom right hand corner of your screen. If you hit those three little dots there and a little uh, button comes up that says share episode, you click on the, the share episode and then it gives you the options of like message, Facebook, WhatsApp. Click it on fa the Facebook icon and then just say, hey, this was an episode on Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. You should listen. And then bang, there you go. The link will automatically be included and you'll be sharing that on your, uh, on your Facebook page. So yeah, once again, if you're listening to this on your cell phone, just look on the screen on the bottom right, there's three little dots. Click on the share episode, post it to your Facebook. Um, that would really help me out. So I hope you enjoyed this. Get out there and develop persistence, uh, a definite plan, a mind closed tightly against all negative influences, a friendly alliance. Remember to, uh, that you control your mind. Uh, you have the power to feed it whatever thought impulses you choose. Success requires no apologies. Every failure brings with it the seed of an equivalent success. Thanks for listening. Share this episode right now and I will catch you on the next one. See ya.